Okay then my friends, so now we know about migrations and how we can use them to create database tables for specific data resources. But once we've done that, how do we then interact with that table or data resource from our code to do things like add new records or delete records or just fetch records to show them in views? Well, to do this, we'd create and use what's known as an Eloquent model, where Eloquent is the name of Laravel's ORM. So ORM stands for Object Relational Mapping, and in general, an ORM allows you to map database tables and data to data structures like objects in your code, with the aim of making it really simple then to interact with your tables through those data structures in your code, instead of having to manually create database queries using SQL. Now, there's many different ORMs made for different languages, databases, and frameworks, and Eloquent is the ORM specifically made for Laravel applications. The way we'd use Eloquent in Laravel to interact with a database table is to make an Eloquent model to represent that table. For example, I could make a ninja model to represent and interact with the ninja table. So imagine if we had a ninjas table with a bunch of records inside it, and then we wanted to interact with that table in our code to do things like fetch the records or delete a record or create a new one, etc. Well then, instead of writing the raw SQL queries to do that, we can just create an eloquent model to represent that table called Ninja. And that eloquent model would be mapped to the Ninja's table and it would compact with properties and methods we can use to interact with it. For example, we could use the or method to fetch all the records in the table, which would then be stored as a collection of objects in this Ninja's variable. Or we could use the find method to find and fetch a single record, which would then be stored as an object in this variable. Also, we could create a new instance of the model, set all the properties, and then save it as a record in the table using the save method. So the whole idea behind ORMs and Eloquent models is to bridge the gap between the code and the database to make it easy to do things like create, read, update, and destroy data. So now we know what models are for, let's try making one. So then the best and easiest way to make a new model is to use Artisan to generate the file and boilerplate the code for us, much like we did with a migration file before. So to do this, we can open the terminal and we're gonna type php artisan make and then a colon. And this time we want to make a model. Then we can give this model a name, which I'm gonna call Ninja. And then also at the end, we're gonna add a flag. So hyphen and then M F S. So this here added on the end means I want Artisan to generate three more things for me when it creates this model. A migration file, which is what the M stands for, a factory file, which is what the F stands for, and a cedar file, which is what the S stands for. Now we already know that a migration file is how we define the structure of a table. And because we'll be needing that ninja table, I've chosen to generate a migration file as well as the model so we can define that table. The factory and cedar files are ways we can generate and populate dummy data within the table. And we're going to come back to both of those files over the next couple of lessons. But generally speaking, whenever I'm making a new model, I like to add these three things at the end of the command to generate all of those additional files at the same time so that we don't have to do everything manually later on. Okay then, so once you've hit enter and run this command, you should see after a second or so, a few new files over in the file tree. The first one is the model file itself, which you're gonna find in the app folder and then inside the models folder. So you can see right here, we've got a ninja.php file, which is the model we just created. The second one is the migration file, which you're gonna find in the database folder inside the migrations folder. We're gonna come back to that in a moment. The third one is the factory file, inside the factories folder, also within the database directory. And you can see we've got this ninja factory file right here. And the last one is the cedar file inside the cedar folder, also with the database directory. And again, we'll come back to that later. For now, I just wanna to get to work on the ninja model and table. So when I make a new model, and a new migration with it, the first thing I like to do is flesh out the migration file to describe the data structure. So let's start by doing that. So then inside this migration file, you can see we've got the up function and inside there we create the ninjas table with these two fields, ID and well, three fields because the timestamps generates those two extra ones. And then down here, we've got the down function to drop the table. So now we just need to add on the extra columns that we need inside this table. So let's add another one. 
and first it's going to be a string and this is going to be for the ninja name all right and then after that i'm going to do another one so table and then we'll use the integer function this time because we want an integer between 0 and 100 eventually for the skill and then finally we've got another field for the biography or the bio so this time we're going to use a function called text for some longer text and this is going to be called bio all right then so that's it that's the migration file complete so now we can run this by opening up the terminal and i'm going to clear this first then we can type php artisan migrate to create this table and once we've done that i'm going to find that table over here the database.sql light file open this up and i'm going to refresh to catch any changes there it is ninjas we can see the id created that updated that name skill and also the bio column at the end awesome okay so next up we're going to take a look at the model file so head to the app folder and then inside that the models folder to find it and inside this file you can see after we use a couple of different namespaces we define a new class for the model called ninja which extends the model class and this model class is what provides the ORM to the ninja model so that we can use those methods on the ninja class directly as well as on instances of the ninja class to interact with the ninjas table and by the way when we use this model to interact with the table, Eloquent automatically looks for a table with the plural version of the class name. So in this case, it looks for a table called ninjas, which is what the table is called, right? So right now, we don't really need to do anything with this ninja model. We can just start using it out of the box to interact with the ninjas table. However, there is one line of code that we're going to add to this class, and that is to create a protected field called fillable. And you want to set this equal to an array of column names which can be mass assigned when we perform saves to the table essentially so in our case that's going to be the name column the skill column and also the bio column now the reason we do this is because by default eloquent disables mass assignment of column values when we make record saves to the table and it does that as a security measure to prevent something called mass assignment attacks so mass assignment is when you try to assign values to multiple different fields of a record or columns of a record in a single step without necessarily knowing which fields or columns are being assigned those values. This might be the case when you're maybe performing an update on a record to update multiple fields at once. And you don't want users maliciously trying to update fields that they shouldn't be doing during that update. So we add this fillable field right here to say what columns can be mass assigned during things like updates and in our case we can allow updates of all these columns without it posing any kind of security risk all right so that's all we really need to do and now we have a table for ninjas and we have a ninja model to interact with that table so let's try this out now technically we could start writing some code to do this inside our route handler function or something but to begin with I just want to play around with the model using a tool called Tinker and Tinker is a bit like a coding playground that we can use within a Laravel application so to open it up we can go to a terminal and we can type php artisan and then Tinker and then press enter so now inside Tinker, we can write PHP code and press enter to execute the code. So we can use it then to play around with a few methods on the Ninja model. Now Tinker doesn't automatically get access to every model or class that we create in the project. We have to reference the namespaces that we want to use in order to use those models. And by the way, in Laravel classes and files, they're often grouped under namespaces, which are like folders, I guess, to help organize the code. And to use a class or feature from another namespace, we need to reference it using the use keyword, first of all. And that way Laravel knows which specific class we're talking about, even if multiple classes have the same name in the project. For example, if I want to use the Ninja model, I first of all have to type use, then a space, then the namespace, which is app, then a backslash, models, then another backslash, Ninja and then I can press enter and now we can use the ninja model from that namespace within Tinker. The same would be true if we needed to use the model from a different file in the project. So then I can create a new ninja record with this model by saying ninja and then double colon to access a class method 
and the method is going to be called create. Now, as an argument, we pass an array of key value pairs to assign values to the different model properties. So that's a name, which could be Mario, um, a skill, which might be 75, and then a bio, which is whatever, blah, 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 something like that, doesn't really matter. But then we could press enter, and then the model interacts with the ninja's table to create this record. And we can see a representation of that record output to us right here. And notice, it's also been auto-assigned an ID of one and the timestamp fields too. So this was a really easy way of interacting with the ninja's table to add a new record, right? Without having to worry about the SQL query itself. The model handles all of that for us when we use the different methods available to us. All right then, so let's clear the terminal now and we'll try adding another record. Okay then, so again, we're gonna say ninja and then we we'll use the create method on that. We pass in an array and then we have a name field first of all, which this time is gonna be Yoshi. Then we have the skill field, which is gonna be this time 45. And then finally the bio again, which is gonna be blah, blah. All right, so let's press enter to create this. And now you can see we get the ninja record back right here with the correct values, but also the ID is two, it's incremented by one. And we have these fields as well, awesome. So then let me clear this again. And this time what we're gonna do is try fetching those documents using the model. So what I can do is just say ninja, and then to fetch all the documents, I can use a class method called all and invoke that. And now you can see that sends us a collection of all of the records. There's only two of them, but we've grabbed all of them. Now, we can also find a single record using the ID. To do that, I could say ninja, then use the find method, and then pass in the ID, which is maybe two, and that grabs us the ninja with the ID. In this case, it's Yoshi, and you can see the ID right there. Now, just very quickly, I wanna show you the database file to show you that those values have been added, those records. We see the ID one and two, and if we scroll to the right, we can see it's Mario and Yoshi and these fields as well. Awesome. So how easy was that, my friends? We created a model using Artisan, so we didn't even really need to write any code to do this. So we had that model. We supplied the fillable fields, that's important. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been able to create those records and passing in all those different fields at once. So we did this. We also created alongside that model, the migration to create the table, which we see right here with these different fields. And then in Artisan now, it was so easy to use this Ninja model to do things like create or fetch the records. So this is the kind of thing we'll be doing going forward, but we're not gonna be doing it in Artisan. We're gonna be doing it in our route handlers.